Hello, seventh and eighth graders. Um, if you are seeing this video, you are in one of the history classes that I am now teaching. Um, so for today, we are gonna be reading through one of the articles in the second packet that is related to history, especially for my eighth graders. Um, seventh graders, this will be a nice little preview for stuff that you're gonna be learning next year. Um, but if you can see my screen, I have a digital copy of packet number two, and I'm gonna scroll. This is the like schedule you guys are allowed to follow. Okay, so what I'm looking at right now, this is your menu. So the different options that you guys can be choosing from. Um, we're gonna go down to section four, because this is where the other subjects are. And we have history. So for the history assignment, you guys have a choice. You can create a comic strip using one of the choices below. Um, so that's in the general education packet, there are some history topics that you guys can create a comic strip for. Or you can read this article, Thomas Jefferson's election in 1800 changed America. And then it doesn't look like you have to do anything else. It's like, just read the article. So if you watch the rest of this video, you can check that box off and that's one of your 10 assignments that you have to do. Pretty easy, right? So we're gonna scroll through everything else that we're doing. Ugh. I don't like math. I'm very happy I don't have to teach Mr. Fox's math classes. All right, so this is the article and you can follow along and read with me or you can read it listen to me and then try to read it on your own. Um, but this Lexile is pretty high. So if you just wanna listen, awesome. Okay, Thomas Jefferson's election in 1800 changed America by smithsonian.com, adapted by New ZLA staff on 11, on, let's see, um, November 8th, 2016. Word count 521 words. Lexile 610 L. Top, in the 1800 election, Thomas Jefferson left, so that's this guy right here, the guy with the grayish brown ponytail as opposed to the white ponytail. Um, so right here, Thomas Jefferson and Aaron Burr, that's this dude, each received 73 electoral votes. However, public opinion and the members of the House of Representatives sided with Jefferson. The second picture, so this one down here on page two. Let me see if I can, okay, we'll try. Second is official presidential portrait of John Adams by John Trumbull, circa 1792. And then bottom, so this picture is electoral votes by state in 1800. And that's from Wikimedia Commons. Okay, so let's jump into the article. In 1800, Thomas Jefferson was the vice president of the United States, but he could only think about one thing. He wanted to be the president. Jefferson was one of four men running. There were two political parties. Each party chose two people. Republican Party versus Federalist Party. Jefferson was running against the current president. His name was John Adams. Adams was a Federalist. The Federalists wanted a strong government in Washington, D.C. Jefferson was a Republican. The Jeffersonian Republicans wanted the states to have more power. Today's Republican Party is not the same as Jefferson's. The Republican Party of today started with Abraham Lincoln. Jefferson was vice president during this election. He had become the vice president because he lost to Adams four years earlier. This was the law then. The Federalist Party also chose Charles Cotesworth, Pick Nick Pickney, Pin, 
Pinckney of South Carolina to run for president. The Republican Party also chose Aaron Burr. Now, there were four people running for president. These men did not travel around to ask for votes like people running do now, but the men did say mean things about each other like people running today do. The men and their parties disagreed on many things. The United States fought to be free from British rule. Republicans were worried that Federalists wanted the US to return to British ways. Only elected officials voted. Winning races was different than today. Back then, each person in the Electoral College got two votes for president. The Electoral College is a group of people. They are picked to vote on behalf of everyone else. If there was a tie, the House of Representatives would vote to choose the president. The House is made up of people from each state. They are elected to make decisions for their states. The House is one part of Congress. The Senate is the other part. Federalists helped Jefferson win. Adams was not reelected to the presidency. He did not get enough votes because slaves were not counted as whole people. States with many slaves would seem like they had fewer people than they really did. The number of people in a state is its population. The population was used to decide how many electoral votes each state got. States with more people got more votes. If slaves were counted as whole people, Adams would have beat Jefferson. But Jefferson could not be president yet. The House meets. He and Burr had tied in the Electoral College. Each got 73 votes. The House met to vote for either Jefferson or Burr as the next president. The race was still tied after many rounds of voting. Then a representative from Delaware decided not to vote in the House. This would give Jefferson the majority or the most votes. He agreed to not vote if Jefferson agreed to help the Federalists. Jefferson became the third president of the United States. He said he did not make a deal to win the race. Many people did not believe him. Jefferson said being elected president meant the country really was free from British rule. Alrighty guys, and that is it for this article. Pretty simple, pretty interesting about how Thomas Jefferson came to be elected as the President of the United States, and a little bit of interesting information about the Electoral College and how people got elected back then compared to how they get elected now. So, I think that's all you have to do. I do not think that there's any follow-up or any writing to that. So that's it. Go ahead and check that assignment off, guys. Super easy. Um, I hope to see you all next Monday on our Zoom call. For eighth graders, it will be at eight. Ooh, nice. For eighth graders, it will be at 11 o'clock. And the link is on Google Classroom. It's the same link every week. And for seventh graders, it will be at 1145. Even though the invite says 12, that's just because Zoom like wouldn't let me put 45. But it's at 1145 for seventh graders. And again, that link is on your Google Classroom. So I'll see you guys on Monday. Talk to you later. Bye, seventh and eighth graders.